If you are a cannabis company or working in the industry, you absolutely have to win in Google because it is pretty much the only traffic source that you can control and rely on. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the exact strategy that you need to know to optimize your website to rank in Google based on what I've done for numerous other cannabis companies. So let's get into it. I expect this video to pick up a lot of new viewers. So those of you who do not know me, and my name is Ryan Stewart. I have been in this industry for over 15 years. I've helped a ton of companies to get more customers online, specifically a number of cannabis companies. One of them, Jeter, actually wearing some of the apparel now and uh, got some of their product right here. It is actually the number one pre-roll brand in the country, nine figures in revenue in three states, growing, scaling, amazing product, amazing company, amazing team. I've been fortunate enough to go along as a ride to help them manage all of their digital, specifically their SEO presence, which is a one I want to focus on in this video because so many channels out there in the cannabis space are blacklisted. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, constantly taking down videos, constantly harassing you about your content, even go as far as removing your profile if you're not compliant over time. Then on top of that, advertising. You really can't advertise on the meaningful networks, again, like Facebook and Instagram, where people are actually spending their time. There are some advertising networks out there for cannabis. You can get on like porn sites if you want. You get on like bus bench ads. You can get banner ads. Stay away from those. They're garbage placements. Nobody sees them. Nobody clicks on them. They do not turn into revenue for you. And those media companies also want to take like a 40K minimum buy. Don't do it. Don't waste your time and energy. So when we look at a traditional marketing mix here. We've got your owned, earned, and paid channels, right? These are kind of all the tactics that flow within them. Now, again, within the cannabis space, a lot of these things are blacklisted. Social media, constantly getting stuff taken down. There really is no such thing as organic press. Paid ads on social. Again, I just talked about how paid ads on cannabis networks are garbage. So you're left with a lot less opportunities here to get traffic and get customers. By far, again, the two things that mean the most are number one, organic traffic from Google because it's completely unregulated. You can post content about whatever you want. People are searching for it. It'll rank and you can bring those people in. It's also point of interest, point of search. If somebody's searching for buy cannabis or like Satip versus Indica, those people are in market because they're telling Google that they're in market. If we can get them to your website, we're getting qualified people to your website. After that, the second most important thing is building first party data, email list, text message list, your CRM data, and then getting people the content. So all the own stuff over here is by far the most important stuff because when we own it, we don't have to deal with the regulations from these networks. I say this all the time to our clients. We never want to build a house on rented property. We want to build a house on own land. So if we can get their contact information and their data and use SEO as a traffic source, it's really the best growth engine for any cannabis company out there. Again, a lot of the earned stuff when it comes to social media shares and pr product reviews are great. Those will pick up organically if you have a good product. You can test things like influencers and PR as well. And we'll talk about it, this as we go through this, but those can get very expensive and not really drive the results that you want. Again, SEO is by far the best tactic to get more customers for your cannabis company. Hopefully that crash course on marketing mix made sense. So this is just the obligatory traffic screenshot from Jeter. You can just see that what I'm going to tell you works. This is just one example of a cannabis client. This is the biggest one. So I love using them. They're also my homies and it's just an amazing company, amazing product. I smoke their weed all the time. It is the best in the world. So one of the biggest things that you're probably struggling with is all the shitty SEO companies out there. You probably pitched a million times. You probably even hired a couple SEO agencies and they haven't gotten results. And I'm going to tell you exactly why they haven't. And I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do right now. And honestly, it's not overly complicated. I'm going to strip this down as simple as possible. And it's not because I'm dumbing it down for you. It's because simplicity wins in this game. You don't need to do anything too crazy. It's all about quality and it's all about consistency. Quality and consistency wins in SEO, especially in the cannabis space where there's so much spam because there's so many crap SEO companies doing crap SEO that the search engines are filled with garbage. So the cream rises when you do things the right way. And I'm going to teach you how to do things the right way. I'm going to show you everything that you need right now. So I really follow a very simple three part system when it comes to SEO for cannabis companies. Number one, I'm going to tell you about the pages that you need, all about the infrastructure that you need to put on your website. Number two is about creating the right type of content. I'm going to walk you through how in what type of content to create to make sure that you're filling up search engines the right way. And then the final part is building the right authority with search engines, right? So what we want to do is we want to get covered by bloggers, media outlets, influencers on the internet. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that very easily. 
So let's just dive right in and start by talking about the pages that you need on your website. Now, what I'm gonna give you is a straw man. I'm gonna tell you the core minimum pages that you need. You're happy to build on top of these, but these are the things that Google's looking for. These are the things that searchers are looking for when it comes to a cannabis website. Now, this gets a little bit more complicated depending on the type of cannabis company that you are because there's levels to this shit, as we all know. You could only sell through retailers. You could only have your own retail location. You could sell online if you're in cannabis or if you're in California, you can now go direct to consumer. So there's all sorts of different things that we need to consider depending on where you are. I'm going to speak from this as a point from the clients that we work with. They usually work through retailers and now I'm also helping them to go direct to consumer here in the United States. We also work with some Canadian companies that can basically sell like e-commerce just completely online. So I'm going to take into account all these things for you when talking about the structure of the website. So the first thing that we obviously need is the homepage. The homepage is really just a summary. It should really be a splash page to talk about who you are, the value of your company and then splash them into the rest of the website. The things that you definitely 100% need are product category pages. So when I say product category pages, that means like your strain pages. It could mean if you have like flour or if you sell vapes or if you sell pre-rolls or if you sell edibles, all these different things, they should have their own category page. This is super easy to set up in a platform like Shopify or WordPress. It's literally just a slash folder, slash product, slash strains, whatever it is that you sell, whatever products that you sell. Now, if you're a single product company, you don't have to have this. If you only sell one thing, like you only sell one type of edible, you're almost like a massive gold joint or something like that, then you can just use one single page for your products. And as you build more SKUs, you can still follow this format. This is something that you can grow and scale into because the goal here, you got to get multiple products. If you only have one product, then you're probably going to be selling through a retailer or dispensary. And you're probably going to want to focus a little bit more on a B2B relationship as opposed to a direct consumer relationship, which is really what the internet's all about. So those product court category pages should house all of the categories that you have from a product. And then underneath that, you should have an individual product page for each SKU that you carry. So when it comes to Jeter, for example, right, they have dozens of different types of pre-rolls that they have. They have different sizes. They have babies. They have XLs. They have one grams. They've got different flavors. They've got live resin. They've got joints rolled in Keef. All these different SKUs get their own product page. And that's important because those products tied to a thing that people are searching for in Google. So for example, this strain right here is called apple fritter, right? It's a strain of cannabis that people are going and searching for. We want to create that page to give searchers a place to land on your website. And this is something that so many brands don't do. And it's a huge opportunity. A perfect example of this is really Leafly. Like if you Google apple fritter or like banana kush or any or like OG kush, things like that, you're going to see Leafly, you're going to see weed maps, you're going to see all those big brands. That is literally the exact type sign type of product page that you should have. Have. It should have the product information. It should have the strain effects. It should have some FAQs. It should talk about the strain. It should talk about how it makes you feel. Literally kind of an informational page. And then within that, depending on how you sell, you want to link to your call to action. So if you sell direct to consumer, literally online, like in Canada, have an add to cart. It should be like an e-commerce product page. If you don't, if you sell through retailers and you should have a button on your website that says find in stores, and then you can path that to a store locator page, or you can path it directly to Leafly or Weed Maps, something like that, where people can find the exact SKUs that you have in by location, right? So the goal of that product page is either to directly sell to consumer if available, or to push them into a retailer where they can buy it from. So that leads me to my next page type, which is going to be a store locator or a dispensary page. So again, if you have single dispensaries, if you have individual dispensaries, each one of your dispensaries should have its own page on there where people can come in and find you locally. So this is the other part of it too. If you have your own retail locations, now we tie in local search. You're starting to see how cannabis gets a little bit confusing here and probably why a lot of your campaigns have failed because you haven't understand the nuances and the pockets of how people are using Google to find cannabis based websites. So what I talked about the individual products was people searching for strains or people searching for your brand to get to that specific type of product. That's if you sell it online or if they want to find it in another store around them. If you don't have your own retail locations, where can I buy baby Jeters? Where can I buy OG Banana Kush? That's my favorite strain. Maybe it's brand agnostic. People are searching for that. Again, if we can rank them and get into our page to our website, we can then push them into where they can find our products. On top of that, maybe you don't have all these own strains. Maybe you have a single dispensary or you've got different locations. You've got retail locations. We want to set up either a store locator page where people can find your products 
or we want to set up slash locations pages, just like we did with slash products for your product categories, set up locations pages, and then build locations pages for each one of your individual retail locations. That's local search, right? So what I just discussed was more of a national search campaign. Banana OG Kush is going to trigger national global searches. But if they're looking for a dispensary near me or, you know, baby Jeter's near me, then they're looking for something localized, which triggers a different part of the algorithm, which is local search. That's where you'll see things like the maps pack, right? Where all those different listings pull through. That's through Google My Business. So you need to make sure that your locations have a Google My Business page. They're getting individual reviews and they're localized and tied to a location where your retail is. And then again, we just want to tie that to a landing page on the website so then people can find where your store is or if they're searching for like dispensaries in LA, dispensaries in WeHo, then we can give your website an opportunity to rank for those localized searches. So after that, we want to have an about page. We want to have a lead capture page. So this is an important one too. Again, if you're on the B2B model where you're selling through dispensaries or retailers, a lead capture page where somebody can come to your website and say, hey, I want to carry Jeter's. Can, we, can I talk to a sales rep? Very few cannabis companies do that. It's a very easy way for, to capture inbound leads to build for your sales team to go out and sell through dispensaries. The other big section that we need is a blog section so we can create ongoing content, which we'll talk about in the next part. Now, two quick tips here. This industry is pretty much 100% mobile. <laughs> so it's cliche, but you should definitely design for mobile first. When you're building your website, make sure you're doing the layouts on mobile mockups first before desktop because it's literally everyone on their phone searching for this stuff. There's very few desktop traffic here. And the other one is the need for email captures all over the website. So you're gonna have to come up with some sort of offer that's gonna entice people to go from traffic to into your database as an email customer. So something that we've done with Jeter is we've done product giveaways, you know, discounts, uh, you know, redemption coupons, bundles, packages, things like that, whatever it is, whatever offer that you can make to grab people's email, you have to do it and you got to pepper it all over your website, even to the point if you're using pop-ups, because it's so, so, so important that you're taking this traffic that's coming to the website and you're turning that into emails. And as we start to talk about content, you're going to start to realize that not all traffic is created equal, right? If somebody's searching for buy OG banana kush right now, it's very high intent traffic, right? We're going to want to send them to a place where they can either find the product or buy the product. But if they're searching for strain effects of banana OG Kush, it's much more informational intent. So that type of traffic is not going to convert. But if we can turn them into email subscribers and build that database, now we can connect with those people on a one to one level and send messaging to them as needed. But right off the back of that, let's talk about the content that you need to create. And this graphic over here, if I can just move my big ass head really illustrates what I was trying to tell you, right? Is that there's gonna be a lot more search volume, a lot more traffic around info informational search as opposed to product search. Literally, like if you times this size by 100 versus this little thing, this is how many people are gonna to come to your website for products, especially if you're new in the game, you don't have the authority, you're not gonna be able to rank for more competitive keywords. You're gonna to have to focus on more high intent informational keywords, which I'll break down in just one second. And content is where most of your traffic is gonna come from, again, both from volume, and for competition reasons, again, if you're new to the game, if you can't compete with the leaflies and the weed maps, which you won't be able to at first, you're going to have to go after more informational searches, which again, I'll break down for you in just one second. So when it comes to the content that you create, whether it's blog content, product content, whatever it is, it should do two things. And this is where so many companies, not just cannabis companies struggle, and it's you should aim to inform or entertain, right? So either inform about types of cannabis, the effects of cannabis, the science behind cannabis. There's so much good studies and research out there that you can cite and that you can build your content around or you can entertain. And if you can do both, then you've hit the jackpots. So when I say entertain, the thing that always comes to mind is I saw this viral video a couple years ago of Seth Rogen rolling a joint. He was teaching how to roll a joint. How to roll a joint is a massively searched keyword. Literally hundreds of thousands of people are searching for that every single month. So they got an influencer out there, somebody who's very well known, obviously you probably can't get Seth Rogen, but I think it helps to illustrate my point, which is they're both informing, here's how to roll a joint, satisfying that search, and it's also entertaining because you got somebody who's funny as shit who's creating the content for you. So regular content creation for your blog is necessary. I always recommend at least one post per week, and it's not so much again about like keeping your website fresh for Google. It's really more about just spreading your footprint. The more content that you create, the more keywords that you can attack, the more traffic that you're going to get. And that's why SEO is also so powerful because it snowballs. It's really the only traffic source that could see the hockey stick growth like this, as opposed to like the up and down growth. It's hockey stick growth if you can hit the right keywords. And that's all about creating consistent content. So content is also critical for gathering links and getting press coverage, which I'll talk about in just one second. So this is probably the most important part about content that you've got to understand. We always approach things from a funnel model, and this funnel model helps to understand the intent behind searches and really allowing us to always provide value to people who see our content. So at the top of the funnel, we've got something like how to roll a joint, right? That's what I was talking about with the Seth Rogen video. 
call this awareness level or top of funnel traffic. It's very high level searches that are relevant to our target audience, but are not product or brand specific. In other words, there's no purchase intent, right? So I was talking about this right on this previous slide here. We talk about all the informational searches up here. This is where the main volume is going to come from. It's something you just got to accept. A lot of clients come to us and they're like, hey, like we're getting traffic, but we're not getting conversions. It's like, yeah, because it's not really like if people are looking for how to roll a joint <laughs> or Indica versus Sativa. It doesn't mean that they're going to buy from you. But what it does tell us is that they're in market, right? It tells us that they could be customers, but they're just not ready yet. They just don't know who we are and we've got to move them down this funnel. That's why capturing email is so important. That's why creating so much content is so important. Interlinking content is so important, right? So as we move down the funnel, we get into something like Indica versus Sativa. It's what I call discovery traffic or middle of funnel traffic. So these are people that are in market, right? If you're searching Indica versus Sativa, you are either a smoker or you are considering buying or purchasing cannabis and they're in market, but they're just unaware of who you are, right? They know about Indica and Sativa. They want to know the difference. They want to smoke. They want to understand what it does to them, but maybe they haven't discovered your brand yet. We haven't talked about brand at all either, but when it comes to cannabis, brand is the most important differentiator, period. At the end of the day, weed gets you high, right? But people buy baby jeeters because of the brand, because of the experience, because of how clean everything that they do is and the feeling that it gives their customers. So I'm not gonna talk about brand here, but if your product sucks and you don't have a brand, you're not working towards building a brand, then it doesn't matter what you do, nothing's gonna work for you and uh, you might as well just quit now. Sorry to be an asshole, but it's just a fact. So these searches are deeper in the customer journey and they're closer to purchase again. So when we're looking for how to roll a joint, it's very high level. Indica versus Sativa has a different level of intent, a little bit more teeth to that search. So the next one down the funnel here would be something like, um, you know, buy pre-roll, find pre-roll, shop pre-roll, or even inserting your brand in there like find Jeters, right? So this is what I call the consideration level or the bottom of the funnel. Now people are down the funnel. There's a lot more intent behind this. They're using keyword modifiers that have purchase intent. And these people are either ready to purchase uh, and they're either coming across your website for the first time or they're coming directly to your website to buy. This is where a lot of people want to focus, right? And this maps to like a product page. But this is why also companies lose because these keywords are very competitive. It takes a lot of time to rank for these keywords and brands miss out on these keywords or they'll create content for those keywords that's just not good enough and it just doesn't satisfy the intent. And then they're sitting here stuck being like, well, I created content and like it's not working and SEO sucks and everyone's a liar. It's like, no. No, no, no. What did I say? Quality, consistency. It's not that the content sucks. It's that your content sucks. Again, I'm a very brash person. I'm kind of an asshole, but I'm a direct communicator and that's just what it is. You're here to win. You're here to make money. So that's all I know how to do is communicate this in a very direct way to help you out, right? And then all the way down the bottom of funnel, this is what I call customer level traffic or after purchase traffic, right? So something that this is not cannabis companies, but really is, I, I've, I've got this from working in the software world is that after somebody purchases, we want to keep them coming back. Again, I mentioned it. Brand is everything, right? Once people start smoking your brand and they identify with it and they want to smoke it again, we want to make sure that we're providing content for those people. And this is also where a lot of brands start. They're creating product focused content for people that are already through the funnel, but not for people at the top of the funnel to attract them in. So this is just an example. Jeter has a big issue with uh, fake cheaters. So you know, creating content around like how to make sure that your GDR is fake. There's actually a lot of search volume around it. So creating content around that to inform, to nurture and to engage customer to really increase that repeat purchase and build that lifetime value with our customers. So now let's just go through and do a couple of examples. This was the example from Seth Rogen that I gave. This is a video that he did on how to roll a joint. It's linked to below this video that you can check it out. This is a great piece of top funnel traffic. Again, this is a video, but this could be done with written word too. I love to throw different types of video in here. The blog content that we're talking about traditionally is written word, but the more multimedia that you can throw in there, if you do video, it's bonus points for your, your content's just gonna do better. Here's a good mid funnel example. Uh, this is from uh, Cresco Labs. This is a company that sells brands and retail. They've got a good post here on Indica, Indica versus Sativa, exactly what I had said. And it really goes through and uncovers the difference between the two and how to help you select which. Another good piece of mid funnel content, this is a past client that we had. This is Ardent Cannabis, right? They sold a decarboxylation machine. So there's also cannabis product companies that we didn't talk about that also this applies to as well. So a piece of mid funnel content that we helped them to create is they sell a product that does decarboxylation. So they had to rank for keywords around decarboxylation. The keywords for decarb, decarb machine were very small, only like 50 searches a month because it's a product that's basically in a new category. So people didn't even know existed. So we had to go up market, up funnel and create content to help bring people in to understand what decarb is and that there's actually a product that can help do this. So we created this article about decarb myths. We built a lot of links to it. And we ultimately got it to rank and you can see 
just how much search volume is 18,000 searches per month for that keyword. So if you just tried to rank for a decarb machine, which is your bottom funnel product keyword, which is cool, it's great, it's gonna drive direct purchases, but you're missing out on all this traffic, all this opportunity to really nurture and engage and bring people into your funnel and then jam them down with your content to let them know that, hey, there's actually a machine. Hey, you're decarbing at home, but did you know there's actually a machine that we sell that does it for you? This article crushed it. It drove a lot of money in sales for them. And again, it's all about understanding the funnel and the intent behind searches and not just creating product focused content. So here's an example of bottom funnel content. This is just a product page. This is in Canada, so they can sell directly to it. But again, all those like buy now keywords, they should map directly to a product page. The one that I had already explained to you about have all of your products, what it does to you, the effects, all those different things we want to put down the page again looking at a company like leafly is a shining example anytime you search for like a strain like cotton candy leafly will probably come up we want to try and emulate pages like that now we've come to the last part of this presentation which is getting covered by media outlets so the reason why this is important is because a media outlet uh, essentially what they can do for you is they generate what are called links so a quick seo lesson if you're not familiar with it google basically counts a link as a vote of popularity so when i say a link here's a good example right there's an article from TechCrunch talking about Porsches. They included literally a link, a hyperlink to a blog called Autoblog. That link right here, what Google does is Google's a spider. It's a bot. It crawls from website to website through HTML links. Literally, like there's a link, boom, it crawls and it discovers new websites. So if you're getting mentioned by a lot of good publications, Forbes, High Times, things like that, Google is then associating your website with those websites. And if you're, it's kind of like being put at the popular table and people think, thinking that you're popular by association. Essentially what it comes down to is the more of these links that you can get from more relevant, more authoritative websites, the faster and the longer that your website is gonna rank for. So link building is really, really important. Now, the reason why I call this media outlets and not link building is because link building is an SEO term. And SEOs tend to do shady things, which is probably why the SEO that you have done before in the past hasn't really worked. And it's because they probably weren't building the right type of links and they were focused on low quality, irrelevant websites, which Google looks at and they're like, no, that's not a popular, cool website. It's a loser website. So ipso de facto, you're a loser. You're not cool. We're not gonna show you an R ultra exclusive rankings. So what we want to try and do is focus on press media outlets, right? It's kind of just a cleaner, more effective way to do link building. Now, the very important chart that I have built here for you, again, just to kind of illustrate this, when it comes to what we're looking for out of a link, we want to go for the quadrant up here in the upper right hand corner, high traffic, right? And high authority. Authority is literally determined by the other links that are pointing to it. There's software that can tell it for us. We handle that for our clients. Forbes would be a great example of a link that we want to be in. We want to be up in here in this upper right hand quadrant down here in the low authority, low traffic would be thing like blog comments or things like fake websites or private blog networks as SEOs call them. We want to start try and stay away from those types of links because they don't really do anything for you. In fact, it's just a waste of time and resources. We want to focus on getting in the upper right hand quadrant. Again, websites that have high traffic, they also have high authority and high relevancy to cannabis. Forbes talks about cannabis all the time, so it actually is highly relevant, believe it or not. So that's why PR links are the best. So you can go out and hire a PR company. They are very expensive. Uh, basically what they're gonna do is they're just gonna pitch you to media outlets, but getting featured in real media outlets, real journals, real newspapers is by far the best type of link that you can get. Another thing that we do for our clients is something called Haro, help a reporter out. It's a, literally a website where journalists, they need quotes. This is kind of the good thing about this relationship, right? Is that like Forbes needs to put out an insane amount of content all the time. They're always looking for stories. They're always looking for quotes from experts. Haro is a website that literally sends out four emails per day with a list of publications that are looking for quotes from experts. So what we'll do for our clients is we'll actually monitor those and we'll look for anything in the cannabis or the business or the tech or the entrepreneurship space. And then we'll pitch a quote from our clients for inclusion. So here's an example for me, actually, that I included on this website data box. An email went out. I was like, oh, I can answer that. I answered it and I got a link back to my website for it. Literally the equivalent of PR link. Very, very, very powerful, very effective. And it's a lot cheaper, it's a lot more effective, a lot more scalable than sometimes in hiring a PR company because when you hire a PR company, yes, you can get on the top websites, but it comes with a, a number of issues. Number one is the cost. Number two is the fact that PR companies are pretty uh, unreliable. And also PR companies aren't focused on the link, they're focused on coverage. So for example, this article here actually does not link back to Jeter's website. So a PR company would call this a win 
But from an SEO point of view, I would call this a loss because we didn't actually get that link. It's something that you have to be very careful of and mindful of when you do work with PR companies. Final thing that we'll fall back on is just bloggers, right? So going out and just finding cannabis bloggers, sending them different types of pitches, either we'll write content for you. Uh, sometimes we'll offer them, you know, free product to be included as like a product review, things along that nature. Another very effective way to pick up links that really, really do impact SEO. And again, it's something that you have a little bit more control of than just PR. I want to leave you with a few thoughts here, right? Um, number one is that you don't really have a choice. If you want to grow your cannabis business, you really got to focus on SEO, right? And I know it's difficult because there's so many companies out there that are just just not good uh, and just unreliable. But it's one of those things where sometimes you got to pick yourself up and dust yourself off. And I promise you, everything in this presentation is exactly what you need to do. You don't need to overcomplicate it. You don't need to spend a ton of money and a ton of resources on this. You just need to focus again on two things, quality and consistency quality of links, quality of content, quality of your pages, quality of the offers that you're making on your website, and then consistency, consistency of build, building content, consistency of getting links. That's really why SEO is an ongoing thing because you need to be consistently creating content and you need to be consistently generating inbound links to continu continuously pump up your authority and show Google that you belong at the popular table, you belong in those top results. So let's talk about cost a little bit here because this is where um, you know, I know, I know a lot of us cannabis companies don't quite have the same budgets as like a tech company where, where we work with a lot. So what does a good SEO company cost you? What does a good SEO campaign cost you? Because a lot of times you go out there, you get pitched for 500 bucks a month and, uh, you have no context for it and it's not your fault, but any type of low cost SEO, it just doesn't work because everything that I listed out for you, it takes time and it takes smart time, right? This is not something you can just outsource and go to you know a foreign country and just drop on their plate because they don't understand the nuances of your business. They don't understand the nuances of your regulations. You've really got to work with somebody who's done stuff in cannabis before because there's even within the SEO space, even though SEO is wide open, there's still nuances to it that you have to understand or you will lose. Lose meaning spend time and resource on something that doesn't work. Good SEO campaign per month will cost you anywhere from $4,000 to $15,000 per month, depending on the scope. And when I say depending on the scope, basically what I mean is the, how much content they're going to build for you and what type of links they're gonna get for you. So again, a PR company, if they're doing PR links for you, it's gonna skew 15 to 25K a month because a good PR company is really gonna take 10 to 15 out of that just on its own. Now, if they're getting a little bit more blogger links or doing some of the Haro links, we usually charge for an SEO campaign between like five and $7,000 a month for our, our cannabis clients. That includes the content, that includes all the links in it. And this is the final piece that's really important, right? Is that if you're gonna do this, you've gotta understand on your own how to measure the ROI of an SEO campaign. And the good thing, the beautiful thing about SEO is it's not overly hard to do because what you can do is you can look to see what the keyword searches are for your types of keywords, right? The products that you sell, uh, the audiences that you wanna target, there's data available that you can see to see how much people are searching for that. What you then wanna do is you wanna take that number and you wanna try and multiply that by if we get 30% of that to our website, right? So let's say there's 100,000, just easy number, 100,000 searches per month. If we get 30% of that, that's 30,000 additional visits to our website. What is our website's conversion rate off the back of that, right? Then you can start to understand how many customers you can get from that additional traffic, and then you can compare that acquisition that acquisition revenue to the cost of an SEO campaign to start to understand really what your ROI is. Now, the beautiful thing about all this is that our agency has actually built a tool. We have an engineering team that does all this for you from an ROI perspective. It's called the Traffic Projection Tool. If you want it, we'll run it for you absolutely for free. We usually only run it for, for our, our clients, um, but happy to do it for you if you hit the link below take you to landing page you can schedule a time with our team and what we'll do is we'll actually set it up for you we'll pull in all your website's data we'll pull in your competitor data we'll find out what we call the total addressable market of an seo campaign for your company and then we'll tell you basically what the roi would look like for you if you were to invest in a campaign that's agnostic of our cost that's just basically just showing you what your total addressable market is and if SEO is really a good fit for your cannabis company at this time. So that link is below. You can feel free to take me up on that. If not, drop me a comment, like the video. I've given you a ton of value here. It's taking a ton of time on my Sunday, by the way. My wife wants to kill me for being in here, but I'm happy to do it because this is what I love doing. I love talking shop and uh, I love cannabis myself too, and I'm happy to help you out. So that's it for me. Ryan is out. Drop me a comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.